Okay, we're going to talk a bit about the video on how to run these things, which are step uh, hard drive disk motors. However, before we do that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. Now, um, I've been working on a desalination technique using the Tesla turbine, and I made this simple turbine to actually test that out. And once I tested that out, I was left with a handful of these things, as you want to get because I had to pull quite a few of them apart. And I thought, well, it's kind of a shame to leave those lying around. I wonder how you do make them drive. Once I found out how to make them drive, what I decided to do then was build a big version. And here it is. Here's my half-built Tesla Drive version. I'm going to use this one. But in order to use this one, what I need to do is drive it. Now, at the back there, I put some magnets. And my intention is to drive that as you would drive a step motor or a hard disk motor. So I had some uh, pretty good reasons on why I wanted to learn how to run these things because I, I want the information from here and then use that to run the big Tesla. So that's the plan. Now let's have a look at some of this theory on the board. So those motors in those hard disk drives are actually stepper motors. And there's a number of ways that you can run a stepper motor. You can run it with a digital signal or you can run it in exactly the same way that you would run a three-phase motor. Now, a three-phase motor essentially consists of three coils uh, set against magnets that are run 120 degrees apart to complete the whole circle. That's electrically 120 degrees apart. And so they run directly at the three-phase supply because the three-phase supply is that far apart. Now, there are a couple of ways of actually wiring these up. One is called delta configuration because it looks just like a delta, capital delta. And what you have are three points of contact. And in between those three points of contact, you have your coils. And each of those gets fired going around, so you get a rotating magnetic field. Now, if we can fire that in a different way, we can actually make that stepper motor work. Now, there's another configuration called the Y configuration. It looks a bit like a Y, but it's spelled W-Y-E. And here we have our coils like this. Well, we have four points of contact, where well, this one is actually the common. It's these ones that we're interested in. Now, on a three-phase motor, each one's powered separately. If we want to run this off a single phase, for instance, then we can put our single phase in at two points, and it will run. It will run, dropping out one of the coils. So it'll run kind of lumpy, and you can feel it going. Doo -doo 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 -doo. You, it won't self-start. You need to give it a bit of a spin, so the momentum of the wheel will overcome this dropout point and continue to run in that kind of lumpy way. So if we put an AC signal across there, we can actually run a three-phase motor, or in fact one of those hard drive motors, just by pumping in an AC. Same thing on the Y configuration, if we put our AC across there, we'll get exactly the same result. Now, the problem is really that coil that's dropped out, how can you pick that coil up but using a phase change so that you can overcome that thump, 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 thump. It's actually relatively easy. All you do is bridge a capacitor across them. If you bridge a capacitor across them, while the um, AC is on its rise, it charges the capacitor. While it's on its fall, the capacitor gives out its power. So you effectively create a power supply which is out of phase of the main power supply. And it charges um, that induction coil, so it will run much smoother and much better. Same thing with the Y phase. You've got your input here. If you put a capacitor across this, you'll do exactly the same thing. Now, you can put the capacitor across this point, or you can put the capacitor across this point. Either one, doesn't really matter. If you put it in one, across one point, it'll run one direction. If you put it on the other point, it'll run the opposite direction. And the same is true here. You can put the capacitor over here, and we get to re reverse its direction of rotation. So if you're going to wire up these motors, you need to know which configuration it is, because this one actually runs better than this one. Unfortunately, all hard drive motors, modern motors, are in fact Y configuration motors. They'll still work, but they don't work as well as the delta configuration motors. So if you've got a three-phase motor that's in Y configuration and you can rewire it, you're better off rewiring it a delta fair configuration because it works out much better. Now, one of the problems with these things, you don't have much start talk. So if you've got an application where you're going to have um, a big heavy power load to begin with and then that falls off as the motor gets running, then this is actually quite poor. But what you can do is you can put in another capacitor 
it's time for the switch. So when you turn it on, you press that switch down, both of these capacitors will dump into the coil and give it a much higher start torque. It's far too high to keep it running for a long time, so it'll burn out the coils. So once the thing's got started, you release that switch and you just have the run capacitor in there. So you have a run capacitor and a start, start capacitor. So the run capacitor has a lower capacitance, so it doesn't load the coils as high. Now, these will run the motor. They obviously won't run it as efficiently as uh, a motor properly run from a three-phase supply. You get about a 70% um, power output out of it. But good enough for us when we're going to play around with some hard drive motors. Okay, so here we are with a couple of the motors. And they're both Y configurations. And if you look at the back of them, what you'll see here is three pins. And those are the pins that you basically solder three wires to. Now, loads of them are like that. Some of them are like that, and you can see four contacts. It's still the Y configuration, but the fourth contact is the common contact that we're talking about, and the one that you don't want. In order to find that common contact, all you do is use an ohm meter and find the one with the lowest resistance. That'll be your common. Then use the other three. Now, I've wired up three wires here, and... Um, I'm going to run this motor. Now, I've got two options really in running this motor. I can run the motor as is, where it's just uh, plugged into the plus and the minus of the sine wave, and it will run, and it'll run a little lumpy. You may be able to hear it, you can certainly feel it. In order to get that sine wave, what I've done is I've used this thing, which is a, a sound card oscilloscope. It's actually by a guy called Seitnitz, and it's really very cool. It uses a sound card as a oscilloscope and as a signal generator. It'll generate somewhere between 20 and 20. 20,000 hertz, I think, something like that. But it's certainly going to generate in the region that I want. So it's going to output to the sound card, and I fed the sound card into this thing, which is a Pro 200 amplifier. It's just so I can get a bit more beef out of it. It's about 12 volts, something like that. Now I've set the frequency at 50 hertz, which is our line voltage, and if I turn on that frequency and then turn this on, you'll see that motor start to spin. So let's turn the power down. And there we go. Now, as I say, it's not self-starting because of the lump that it has to get through, but it's spinning at about 50 hertz, or 50 cycles per second, say about 3,600 RPM, something like that. And that's the motor spinning now, using the straightforward sine wave. So, in line with what I was chatting about on the board, I've left the two connections to the um, amplifier as was, but between the other two, here, I've put a capacitor. Now, that's a 400 nanofarad capacitor, and it doesn't really matter which one you connect it to. Here, it's connected to the live and connected to the free leg. If I had connected it to the free leg and to the neutral, it would have actually spun in the opposite direction. So, this time, it's going to spin in one direction. If I connected it up to there, it would spin in the opposite direction. The value of that capacitor actually is quite difficult to ascertain because it depends on um, the power draw of the motor and the frequency at which the motor is running. A rough rule of thumb that I came across was 78 times the kilowatt draw of the motor gives you an idea, a target figure for that particular capacitor. Now, this wouldn't run at 50 hertz. I actually had to put this down at 45 hertz because, it, as I say, it's frequency dependent. Um, now, if I start that signal generator going again, it's at 45 hertz, kilo, uh, 45 hertz, what you should see is the motor just start running all by itself. And there we go, it's now self-starting. <laughs> That's kind of cool. So if you want to work out what that capacitor is, then use that rule of thumb, but then measure the voltage draw across each of the coils and adjust the capacitance until you get the voltage roughly e uh, equal across the coils. Now, I've done this using this setup, but obviously there's no real reason you need to do uh, this setup. I've only done this so I can vary the speed. If what you do is use a transformer, so say you plug it into the mains and you transform it down from 240 volts or 120 volts to 312 volts, somewhere around about there, and then you're going to be able to run this straight from the mains using a transformer and a capacitor. And you can work out the capacitance and then test your capacitance until you work the thing properly. And you'll be able to run that um, hard disk motor really, really easily from just a transformer and a set of capacitors. And that will get you running and going. The other alternative with this is to use a um, digital controller. And they do those for RC cars. So you can buy an RC controller. I've got one on order when it arrives here, and I'll go through that. So let's just start that up again and leave it running.
<laughs> it is very cool how it self starts, it really is. Because you can get loads of these things. So obviously I'm going to take the basic principles of what we've been talking about and build a larger motor to run my large Tesla drive here, disk drive. And that's what I plan on doing with it. I would like to do a close-up of this, um, but it's not really possible with the setup I've got. But a friend of mine called Mike Gaiman is actually starting to run a fundraising project for me to raise the money to improve the quality of the video that you're getting. So at the moment, for the last two years, I've been using a webcam and the, ca and the microphone on that webcam. And it's cons I've thought it was uh, reasonable quality, and it has been, but it could be improved, but I'm not going to spend the money on it because I don't have the money to spend on it. But Mike's running a fundraising campaign for me, and I'll put the link in down there. So have a look at that, and thank you very much for watching.